So I'm a, an oncologist in Sheffield and I collaborate with Dominique uh, on a number of projects looking at uh, circulating tumour cells uh, both in uh, osteosarcoma and in uh, soft tissue sarcomas uh, as well. Um, suffice to say that if there are any challenging technical questions then you can uh, uh, ask them of Dominique. Um, so, um, as we know, osteosarcoma patients with metastatic disease have a poor prognosis um, and um, metastases develop. I mean, it's perhaps uh, obvious to say it, but from the primary tumour um, entering the bloodstream uh, and then going on to form um, metastases. <coughs> and the study of circulating tumour cells um, sort of provides a, a window into the metastatic process, so provides an opportunity for trying to uh, study some of the biology of, of the metastatic process, perhaps identifying some novel therapeutic targets, um, but also actually um, counting those circulating tumour cells may be clinically relevant as a potential prognostic marker to try to stratify treatments and, and perhaps um, as a, a method for surveillance to detect recurrence earlier. Um, so just um, a, a little bit on some small studies that have, have been published um, uh, by other groups uh, looking at circulating tumour cells in, in osteosarcoma. Um, so there's a, a study that's published by um, Zhang and colleagues uh, which uh, looked at measuring circulating tumour cells using flow cytometry, uh, measuring abnormal DNA uh, quantity. In the, the graph over on the left-hand side, you can see that there's a clear difference in the number of circulating tumour cells between patients with uh, recurrent and metastatic disease and patients with um, primary uh, osteosarcoma uh, and in the uh, graph next to it that there's a, a difference in uh, progression-free survival by the number of circulating tumour cells. Uh, another study done by uh, Wu and colleagues um, enumerating the circulating tumour cells using uh, a CAM patrol system, which is basically a filtration system, so you're isolating them be uh, based on size of the circulating tumour cells. Um, and um, what you can see, so there's two stages of patients, those with uh, localised disease and those with metastatic disease. Um, so localised in red, metastatic disease in blue. And you can see how prior to treatment they've got high levels of circulating tumour cells, uh, which comes down with uh, chemotherapy and then uh, post-operatively. Uh, so some uh, work that um, has uh, Dominique in Dominique's lab, um, which is, um, suggests that circulating tumour cells, yes, they may be useful as a biomarker for follow-up. Uh, so this was a preclinical study uh, where... Um, uh, mice were uh, injected in the flanks with um, osteosarcoma cells uh, and then um, blood was collected um, and uh, to uh, isolate and identify circulating tumour cells. Um, and basically what we can see is, um, so in the graph over on the left-hand side, um, you can see as time progresses from 10 days to 30 days to 45 days how the tumour volume increases. Um, and this is measuring the circulating tumour cells using flow cytometry, you can see at day 10, just about, that you can start to pick up the circulating tumour cells ahead of actually being able to detect the tumour clinically. Um, I think, importantly, there was no evidence of detectable circulating tumour cells at 24, 48 hours after inoculation. So this is uh, not some uh, issue with the, with the technique. Um, so this was using flow cytometry, uh, but using the Depuray, uh, we could see a much greater number of circulating tumour cells, um, so uh, suggesting a, a, a better technique for trying to identify these. Um, so there are um, a variety of different ways by which circulating tumour cells could be identified, and there are 50 different assays um, suggested um, which um, use uh, either uh, single or combination approaches using physical properties of circulating tumour cells or biological properties looking at, at markers. Um, but the key thing, as you'll have picked up, is that these are rare, uh, rare cells. So within a, uh, a, a mill of blood, you're trying to identify uh, a handful of cells in amongst millions of normal cells. Um, and this really suggests that an enrichment process is required as a step um, in terms of trying to identify these. 
Um, and so um, we've been using something called the PAS Sortex, um, which enriches the blood samples um, based on uh, the circulating tumour cells being uh, a larger size. Um, so the blood sample goes through um, a cartridge uh, and you can see so the, the circulating tumour cells here are in green. They're bigger than the other uh, normal blood cells. So they get trapped um, by the, uh, the filtration system within the Parsortex cartridge. Um, and then by reversing the flow, you can then um, uh, remove the uh, circulating tumour cells. Um, and then um, we use the Depuray um, to isolate these single cells. Uh, and basically, the, um, the Depuray um, creates um, an electric charge, um, a cages, into which you have individual cells, and then you can um, identify single cells by whatever approach you want, for example, by uh, using immunohistochemistry, so expression markers, to identify individual cells, which you can then uh, extract and pull out uh, to study uh, and analyse. Um, so, um, so, for example, you can look at um, expression of vimentin, which is a, a postulated um, sarcoma expression marker uh, of circulating tumour cells. Uh, you can look at DNA content. As a, as a proof of concept, so um, Kenny had uh, sent to um, us a blood sample from a patient with uh, an osteosarcoma patient with uh, lung metastases. So we take the, the blood sample, it gets enriched through the parsortex, um, and then through the Depuray uh, to isolate the cells. Um, and we were able to identify um, uh, sort of about three cells per mil of whole blood of vimentin positive cells with abnormal DNA content, which we think are osteosarcoma circulating tumor cells. Um, and actually with a combination of vimentin and keratin markers, um, a high number of circulating tumour cells. So this is uh, a, a process, uh, a flow uh, pathway that we have for trying to identify circulating tumour cells. Uh, we have a study which is funded by Sarcoma UK, which is applying this to patients with um, soft tissue sarcoma. Um, and then within the ICONIC study, um, we will be um, getting uh, paired samples uh, pre- and uh, post-neoadjuvant chemotherapy for us to um, validate this and, and, and to study the um, circulating tumour cells further. Thank you. <laughs>